there's gonna be three main things that we're gonna cover. And I'm not gonna go into too much detail about why they're needed. I'm just gonna give a very quick summary of what I see and what to do instead. And you can decide whether it's applicable for you, all right? Number one, people are setting up to their shots just a little bit too square. What I mean is, you could almost form a door frame around me. My setup, my club head, the orientation, my shoulders are level and square, my hips are level and square, my knees are level and square, my eyes are level and square. It's all very straight. And you might think, well, that's good, isn't it? Generally not, because most people's golf swings, and we'll get into a couple of reasons in a minute, struggle when we start from such a straight sort of position, because what happens is it tends to lean over a little bit more because we're trying to sort of get down and we're very eager to move that way. So if anything, we're a little bit too leany, and it doesn't mean weight distribution, I'm not talking about that, because that's often very even. So we have this square look that looks very passive, shall we say. It doesn't look like I have any specific intention of trying to send something that way. And when I stand over the ball now, for me to get my club into a good place to be able to launch it over there, I sort of have to feel that I've got to move my body really quite a lot all the way to the top to sort of form a goal swing because I feel very static. I want you to have a dynamic setup. And that means, as I address the ball, it looks athletic. It looks like my intention is to send something that way. I'm not passive, I'm not straight up and down. I look like I can throw my club, that I can swing through and strike this ball to go that way. And some of that starts with a bit more tilt in the hips, in the shoulders, and also my eye line. Depending on what your dominant eye is, if you're left eye dominant, you're gonna look through that way. If you're right eye dominant, you can look a bit more this way. Me, I'm a little bit more right eye dominant. So my head is going to tilt just a hair looking that way. And by doing this, with this little tilt here, the hands pressed a bit more forward, it's more dynamic. And from here, this is a much easier position to start from to wind up in the backswing. So I want you, before we proceed, to stand up and set some angles and feel like you're tilted a little bit more, you're seeing the target a little bit more. Because we've got a setup now that is more dynamic, it's gonna be easier, shorter, more efficient, because we have literally less further to travel. I was working with a golfer on the range and this was one of the main things we were working on because he would sort of lift his arms up and almost end up all the way up here and have to work all the way back down. So I said, right, let's just get the setup and all I want you to do is feel like you're winding up your rib cage just a few inches up that way. I'm allow and allow those hips to sort of wind up and turn, but I'm staying in this dynamic posture. So with this, I'm going to turn the rib cage to there. And that is it. That is my only goal that I want you to have for the backswing, to get about here. And from this placement, we can launch ourselves through. Now, one of the things that can get a little bit tricky when we're trying to feel this wind behind, as it were, we can end up just sort of turning too much and not allowing those arms to raise. Because if I just keep sort of winding that rib cage and keep the arms low, my arms actually stay here. We actually really do want the arms to elevate a little bit. So I'm going to show you something, which is step three, that is really gonna create some freedom and fluid momentum in your swing. But I want you to just rehearse a nice little feeling. You can even do it with the club upside down here and wind up that rib cage. Wind up that rib cage, just a few inches to about here. And you think, well, that's a short swing. You will never stop here, I promise you. Momentum will take you a lot further. So keep rehearsing that movement. Just wind up the rib cage, turn the hips back. But now let's refine it even more and launch some shots. Here's the third step. Because we want to really feel like we're not getting stuck too much behind the ball and through, so we end up muscling it with the body or we end up just slapping it with the hands, we need to kind of activate everything, but we need it to have fluid feelings. And we do that 
by allowing the lead arm just to glide, okay? And this is where the setup and the backswing really come into play. So let's take our good setup. I'm going to make my backswing, but now I'm going to have a sensation that my left, my lead arm, is, that, is not just pinned to my body and I'm allowing it to fall, you know, follow the rib cage. I'm going to feel that I'm actually just allowing it to glide up and down. It almost feels like I'm going along my sort of target line here. But that is the feeling I want. And why is that good? Because if I allow that to just glide up, I'm in a placement, a position, that gives me room and time to move back through. Less manipulation, which is only a good thing, right? So with that in mind, we want the lead arm to swing back, but here's the beauty. We also want it to glide through. We don't want to bother with any of this spinny stuff or worrying about trying to shallow or, you know, get extra shaft lean. Don't care about that for now. You just want a good, simple foundation golf swing, right? And it's going to happen from allowing the lead arm to swing backwards and forwards. But you can train yourself doing this and you have to do it correctly. I'm not just using my arms, okay? I am basically clearing myself out the way. Because if I don't turn my sort of core and wind up out the way, I sort of hit my chest. I get stuck. So I have to wind up and get out of my way. Likewise, if I want my arm to sort of just fall back and glide through, I'm kind of a little bit stuck here. So I get out of the way. I let the arm fall and get out the way. And we can rehearse this by there. That, my friends, is the golf swing. We've got the setup. Wind up arm glides, let the arm fall, and simply get out of my way. Precise golf swing that is simple to execute. Put those steps in place, I promise you. Whether you don't have time to practice or whether you do, it doesn't matter. This is simplicity at its best. Let me know how you get on. And until then, check out this lesson because it's really going to give you some steps for better driving.